In the previous video, we saw how to create text views and edit them to our heart's desire. In this video, we're gonna move on from that to see how to add buttons, and more importantly, use those buttons to make our apps interactive so that the user can start doing something in our app rather than just admiring our lovely text views. So let's drag in a button. I'm gonna go for one that's centered and a little bit underneath my great app text view. So you can see we've got that default Android style there. If you've got the button selected, you'll be able to do all the standard customizing, like setting the alpha, changing the background, etc., etc., just like we did with text views. But I'm actually gonna ignore all of that this time and go straight to this new property called the on-click property. And what this does is it allows us to do something when this button is clicked. And all we have to type in here is the name of the chunk of code, also known as a function or method, we want to run when this button is clicked. So I'm gonna call it click function, like that. And you'll notice that I've used something called camel case there. So we've got a lower case everywhere apart from this F for function. And this is our standard way of defining functions and indeed variable names as well to use lowercase everywhere except for the first letter of the second and if there was a third, fourth, fifth word. And it just makes it quite readable without putting in spaces or hyphens or anything nasty like that. So press enter to keep that. So now I know that when this button is clicked, the click function will be run. What I haven't done yet, of course, is write the actual code for click function. And that's what we're gonna do now. So go back over to the Java folder and then the top option, neither of the test ones and double click on main activity. So we saw this first a couple of videos ago. Just to remind you, it's got the package name at the top and then a couple of default classes here. Don't worry too much about me using the word class. Think of it for now just as a chunk of code. We'll be looking at much more detail of what a class is in the next section. So we've got our two classes there for compatibility and to interact with the operating system itself. And now just before we write our button code, let's look at this in a bit more detail and see what's going on here. So it starts off with the word public, which is essentially a Java keyword to say that this class can be accessed from anywhere within the app. It's public. And then it's a class. So we use the word class to define a class and then it's called main activity. And then it extends app compat activity. So that's the same as what we've got here. And that just means that our main activity class, which controls our main activity, which is the screen that the user can currently see. And what we're saying with this extends is that the main activity will take the code for app compat activity and extend it, so add some code to it. So it essentially that's a way of getting our backward compatibility into our main activity class. And again, don't worry too much about this. This is quite high level Java code and we're only very much dipping our toes into Java at this point. But I want you to, to have a reasonable idea of what's going on in this boilerplate code. Then further down, we've got this override command. And that's because what we're doing is customizing a method or function here called onCreate. And a method or function again is just a chunk of code and this one's called onCreate because it's run whenever the activity is created, i.e. when the app is run. But this onCreate method is one that already exists and we're just adding some code to it. And that's what this override message is saying. So it's saying that we know that onCreate already exists. We're not trying to recreate it. We're just adding some code to it. And then here we've got protected instead of public, which means it's only accessible to code within this package. Again, don't worry too much about that. It really doesn't matter at this point. It's just the default state of the onCreate method. Then we have this void keyword, which essentially means that this method does some stuff, but it doesn't return any information. 
So you might at some point create a method that adds two numbers together, for example, and then that would return the result of those two numbers added together. But this method doesn't return anything, it just does some stuff. And then what is that stuff that it does? Well, it sets up the activity itself using the saved instance state. So if there is a saved state for this app within the user's phone, then it will restore that. And then finally, it sets the content view using the r.layout.activity main. So r is short for resources. Layout is this layout folder here. And then activity main is the activity main XML file. So it's essentially linking up the main activity with this particular layout. So that's what's going on. Again, don't expect to fully understand every aspect of that, but you very much will by the end of the course. All we're going to do is to create our little method to do something when the button is clicked. So I'm going to start by creating my method as a public method. So it's accessible from anywhere and it's not going to return anything. So I use the keyword void and then I'm going to need to add the name of my method and I'm going to jump back over to activity main dot xml to remind myself what that was click function so i'm just going to copy that and paste it in it's obviously critical that we get the name right otherwise when we press the button the app will try and run a function which isn't there and your app will crash so now this function is called by the button and the button is a type of object called a view you may have noticed we had text views um, down here we've got image views. Essentially a view is anything that appears on the screen. So a button is a view, a checkbox is a view, a switch is a view, etc. So over in my code, to reflect the fact that this has been called by a view, I'm going to create a view variable. And I create a view variable using view with a capital V. And you can see that this is requiring me to add a new class to my app, which I can do using that shortcut, which is Alt, Enter, and then it adds the import statement for me. So I can now run all the view related code. So view with a capital V creates a view, and I'm gonna call this view, view. So you can use any name you like there, but the kind of standard thing is to use the name of the type of thing that it is. So in this case, it's a view. So view with a capital V says, I'm gonna create a view and I'm gonna call it view with a little v. And that view will refer to the button that called this method. Hope that makes sense. Listen to it again if it didn't. And if you're still confused, again, don't worry too much. We're diving quite quickly into some Java code just so that we can get feel for how it all works, but we will look at it in much more detail later on. Now you notice I put in some curly brackets there. They are the standard way in many, many programming languages to contain some code. So this means that the click function will start at this curly bracket and it will finish at this curly bracket. So what do we want our method to actually do? Well, there's not much we can make it do with the level of knowledge that we have so far. What we're going to do is display some information in the logs. So you remember we had these logs down here. We haven't really used them yet. This is where we're going to start using them. So to put a bit of information in the logs, we use log with a capital L dot and then we've got a couple of different letters that we can use. So log dot D, E, I, V, W, etc. And therefore different types of logs. So warnings, errors, etc. We've just got some information. So I'm going to use log dot I. And you can see that that top function, which is what I'm going to be using here, is expecting a tag and a message. So I'm gonna press enter to get the parentheses in there. And then the tag is just kind of a type of message that we're doing here. So I'm just gonna use info. And then to give the actual message itself, I'm gonna add a comma 
and then button pressed like that. And notice I've put both of those in double quotes because they're strings. They're bits of text that we want to appear in the logs. And whenever we want to define a bit of text in Java or indeed in pretty much any programming language, we use double quotes to do that. And then we're almost done, but you can see I've got a little red wavy line here. That's because I'm missing my semicolon. So Java requires semicolons at the end of each line. But now that that's done, we should be able to run our app and press our button and have the button actually do something. Okay, there it is. I'll just bring up the logs so that we can see the result, hopefully. And then let's press the button. And there we go. Hurrah! Might not look like much, but that's actually something very significant. We've just created our first interactive Android app. So you press the button and you get a response in the logs. Don't worry, by the way, about getting all these other bits of info. The logs often give a lot of info that we don't really need. If you want to look for a particular item in the logs, then you can always use the search function here. So if I look for button, for example, then I will only see the ones that I'm interested in. And that can be useful for filtering out all of the rubbish that you're not interested in. Okay, so congratulations, you built your first interactive Android app. Now, of course, though, I want you to do it yourself. So what we're gonna do now is actually close this app down. I want you to create a whole new app which simply contains a button and then displays something in the logs when that button is pressed. So it's more or less recreating the functionality that we've got here, but practicing recreating an app from scratch will get all those ideas into your head. So the on-click function, adding in the button, creating the activity, etc. Definitely a good idea to give it a go yourself. So you're recreating a new app from scratch with a button that then displays anything you like in the logs when that button is tapped. Best of luck, pause the video and go for it. Okay, I hope you managed that. Here I go. So I'm going to close down the existing project. And then I'm going to start a new Android Studio project. And I'm just going to go through the process much as we did before. And I'm going to call this click demo. I'll leave the company domain the same and the location the same. Next, leave all that as the default and we'll have an empty activity just as before. Next, I'm going to leave the activity name the same. And then this will get created just as it did before. And here we go. So I'm going to bring out my project files. Oh, it's already got main activity selected. But I'm going to go to res for resources and open up activity main.xml. And here we go. So I'm going to drag in my button. I'll just pop it there. And I'm going to change the text this time to click me. There we go. And I'll get rid of the text view as well because we don't need that. And one thing you can do is once you've got that set up is just run the app. And then it will run nicely in the background. And then when you're ready to actually do something with it, you can use the quick launch to run it very quickly again. So that's quite a neat thing to do. As soon as you've created your app, run it, and then it'll be ready to run much quicker when you actually need it. So let's go down to the on click option. There we go. I'll call it something different now. We'll just call it button clicked and I'll copy that to keyboard. So I've got it in the memory. All right, and then back over to main activity. Got the logs kicking in there. I don't need them yet. And then remember, I write my code inside the main activity class, but outside the onCreate method. 
and I'm going to create a public method which doesn't return anything it's void and it's going to be called button clicked and just as before it's going to be called by a view so I'm going to create a new view using view with a capital V I'm going to use alt enter to automatically import the view class and then I'm going to call my button or the element that called the method view with a little v. Then I'm going to use curly brackets to define the limits of my method. And finally, I'm going to send a message to the logs using log.i and then I'll use alt enter again to import the log class. So just to have a quick look at those you can see what we've imported there and if you do have problems with the alt enter method you can just type in import android.util.log and again I'll just call this I'll give it a tag of info and the message I'll give is the button was clicked. So slightly different to before but the code is essentially the same. All right, there we go. I hope you managed that. Let's just check, make sure everything is running as needed. So there we go, our instant run has happened. So we'll click the button and with any luck, there we go, the button was clicked. So just down the bottom there, click it again and you can see that's working great. Brilliant. So now we've got our first bit of interactivity, but of course the interactivity at the moment is only one way. The user doesn't actually see the results of this, it only appears in our logs. And also the user can't do anything other than click the button itself. So we're going to fix this first in the next video by seeing how the user can enter some information and how we can access that information using a text field. And then we'll follow on from that to see how we can give the user some feedback, actually display something on the screen. All right, so lots to do. Let's get straight to it. Text fields in the next video.